again everybody and welcome back to my channel Jersey Shore Pondscapes videos my name is Chris today's we're going to be talking about all different accessories for your pond okay um, so things like lighting statues um, decks bridges fountains okay all the sort um, now let's start off with lighting okay lighting is really big um, it's awesome to have but <laughs> damn, but um, I gotta say I hate lighting I hate pond lights okay it just seems that everywhere I go they're never working right and it's always, Chris, while you're here, can you fix the lights in my pond? <sighs> All right. Some of the new lighting is a lot better because it uh, uses LEDs. And LEDs um, seem to have a much longer life and work much better than the old little halogen bulbs did. The old halogen bulbs and these lights would heat up and it would get hot and it would start to dry rot the rubber seals in the lights and then the water would leak in and short out the light and you're stuck. Um, the problem I have with lighting that goes in the pond is that one, if a bulb goes out or if a light is no longer functioning, it's hard to get it out and replace it. And if you, you know, go out and you buy another light to replace it, a lot of times the new light, um, the cord's not long enough, or the, the adapter into the transformer doesn't fit, it's different. You know, there's always crazy little issues like that that become such a headache. Um, also, the lights in your pond will get covered with algae. So the lenses will get all covered with green algae as well. So they have to be taken out and cleaned all the time. So for me, lighting in a pond, it's just, just my personal thing. I don't like it, okay? I don't want my pond to look like a pool. Um, unless it is a form, real formal pond, then it can be different. But for a natural shaped pond, all right, it's not a pool. We don't need to light it. The fish don't need lights in the pond at night to see, okay? Um, having lights, you know, in the waterfalls or in a stream is, is nice, and they're easily accessible. But the lighting in the pond sometimes can be a pain. For me, I much prefer landscape lighting outside of the pond, okay? Low voltage lighting outside of the pond. Maybe a spotlight on the waterfall or something like that is fine, but to me, to uplight some plants or nice trees, ornamental trees around the pond, and seeing that reflection in the water at night, to me, that's what I like. And if my light, you know, outside the pond next to this tree, you know, doesn't work and I need to replace it or whatever, it's a lot easier for me to get at than something down into the pond that's all buried in rock and gravel. Okay, so just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, again, it's my personal preference that I don't like pond lights in the water. Um, I like my lighting outside the pond, up light, see the reflection, you know, of the trees and stuff in the water. Um, that's my thing. Um, again, just uh, keep in mind that a lot of these pond lights don't last forever and they look nice while they're brand new and newly installed, but a year or so down the road, they're covered with algae and stuff. It's all got to get cleaned. So that's lighting. Um, next thing is statues. Um, all kinds of statues, whether it's a, you know, just a statue or it's like a spitter, you know, it's gonna spit water. Um, it's all good. It's all, you know, just adding to the atmosphere, the aesthetics of the pond. Um, I wouldn't suggest putting all kinds of crazy crap all around because it just becomes too much. Um, and if you have a statue that is going to spray water or you know spill water, drip water, spit water, whatever, just make sure that it's in an area where if the little hose or tubing to it 
leaks that it's not going to drain your pond. Okay. Um, if you're using a separate pump, make sure you don't put the pump down on the bottom of the pond. Keep it up high next to the statue so that if something does, the little hose does pop off or if it does leak or whatever, um, that, you know, it's it's only going to be pulling water, you know, from the top of the pond and not, not the whole thing. Um, well, all that is good, you know, some of those little spitting frogs and whatever, you know, um, <laughs> add a little bit to the aer aeration and help to circulate some water. They're usually a small pump that's put on it. Um, the only other thing is any kind of statues that you're putting into the pond, uh, if it's uh, cement, right, if it's like a, if you're doing like an urn in the middle that overflows or, or a fountain, you know, it drips down or whatever. Um, I just would stay away from anything that is painted, okay? Because that paint um, will eventually start peeling off. And being in your pond, if it is, say, like you have an urn in the middle, okay? I mean, it's great, but you're going to get a green slime coat on it, all right? So anything that's painted really nice is not going to stay looking like that. So I would tend to stay with something that's stone or um, just a natural concrete, okay? So no paint that's going to chip or peel off of the thing eventually. Um, now, the other things are, let's say, um, a bridge, all right? Bridges are really popular. Now, bridges are great. They're really neat effect. My thing with bridges, though, is that um, two things. One, they have to lead you to a destination, okay? Um, I've seen ponds, like these little ponds that have a bridge over, like, the one side of it. And the other side of the bridge is a fence. Why? Right? Make sure that your bridge is leading you to a destination of some sort, whatever it may be. <laughs> but at the very least, over the pond and into your yard. And not just like over the pond and into a fence. It just, it's just, it's stupid at that point. It's basically just, you know, blocking, covering the pond. Um, yeah, for what, okay? Um, which leads me to the next point. Make sure your pond is big enough to support a bridge, all right? If you have a pond that's 10 feet long and you're putting a four foot bridge over it, you're covering, you know, a good portion of your pond and the railings or whatever kind of bridge or whatever could also be blocking your view of, of your waterfall or, you know, whatever you, you may have here, okay? Um, a, a bridge can be a big obstacle in your pond as well. So we want to avoid that. Um, flip side, the bridge can give your fish some cover as well. If there is a predator around, like a heron or something, the fish could hide underneath it. But the heron could also use that bridge as a nice place to sit while he's hunting, all right? So it's just some things to think about. Um, bridges are great. Um, just uh, also a little design concept here too. If you are building a bridge, obviously the bridge is gonna span over a portion of your pond that's a little narrower. So if we make a pond in the shape of a figure eight and have the bridge in the middle, the disadvantage with that is our water flow between the two big open bodies of water going through this little three foot area under a bridge is not great. So the bridge can kind of restrict the water flow in your pond somewhat. So make sure if you're doing that, that you have adequate water flow on each side of your bridge. Maybe a bottom drain on this side, a bottom drain on that side, or maybe a waterfall here and a river here or a skimmer here or something so that the water is being pulled and circulated all around, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's bridges. Um, decks, okay, having a deck overhang a pond. Um, I'll have some pictures up here as well of um, some decks that I've done on ponds. Um, they're great, absolutely. Um, I have built concrete piers in these ponds um, that are painted with a liquid neoprene rubber coating to seal them and to make it look black. 
and you know put my decks out over these piers over the water um, that works great too the decks are really nice because they get you out on the body of water again we need a pond big enough to put a deck on okay um, the deck needs to be a feature of the pond the bridge needs to be a feature of the pond the pond can't be a feature of the deck okay if you have you know a deck on the back of your house so, you know you got a big deck on the back of your house and you want to build a little pond off of it that's fine okay because um, you're kind of building the pond just in an area that you can view off of your deck but you don't want to build a big deck and then have this little pond coming out from from it it's just not scale like right um, you want to have a pond big enough that you can put a deck over a portion of it and and go out on that deck and be around the water okay um, and then you know things like gazebos patios all that stuff they're great um, hardscape features to have around the pond like a pergola stuff like this all that stuff though uh, I would really you know if possible try to design that all into the design of your pond before you build it okay so if you know you're going to be building a patio over here and you want to put a table and chairs on it it's got to be so big right to support your table and chairs and how are you going to build that into the pond right is the pond going to wrap around is a waterfall going to come down you're going to have a river going by it or is it going to be you know like on a little peninsula going out into the pond um, just plan for all that stuff when you're building the pond okay um, otherwise, you know, uh, just some ideas of things that you can add, some accessories that you can add to your pond, right? Um, the other thing too is like fountains, all right? Spray heads in your pond. Yeah, it's all nice, but here's some uh, ideas for you. Um, if you want to do a fountain, little spray head fountain in your pond, um, you may need a separate pump for it. Uh, depends on how your filter system set up. You might be, if you have an external pump, you might be able to, you know, Y it off and bring a little line out to this fountain head in the middle of the pond and set up whatever. Um, its possibilities are endless. Um, just with these fountain heads, I would really recommend either like a geyser just a straight up foaming kind of geyser to spray the water straight up unrestricted um, or maybe like a bell which is those uh, fountain heads that just dump back in like a little bell okay um, they can work really well too but any of these fountain heads that are like these little three-tier spray little jets of water popping out all over the fountain heads themselves have a whole bunch of little tiny holes all around them that the water sprays out of those holes can get clogged up really quickly and quite often, okay? So what you end up with is instead of, you know, 20 little holes with water spraying in a little three-tier fountain thing, um, eight of those holes are, are clogged and the water's going all over the place on the rest of them, okay? Now, you gotta clean them out. You got to keep that thing clean. Yeah, but it's out there in the middle of your pond. All right, so just be really careful with fountain heads. Again, I, I've brought up um, pipes. Um, you can see some of this, this pond right here is actually a rock that was a concave shaped rock that I drilled a hole through and I bought a um, inch, inch and a half, no, I'm sorry, a, a half inch pipe through it. And we just have the water spurting up all over that little, you know, a pot, it's a nice little pedestal of rock with this concave rock on top where it's spraying up. Um, and that works great. <laughs> that doesn't get clogged up. Um, but any, you know, again, little fountain heads with all those little holes in them can be a real uh, real pain. So um, a geyser type thing or a bell umbrella kind of thing works really well too. Um, but uh, 
definitely um, keep that in mind for that. So, right, so we have like those little statues of spray, spitter things, fountain heads, lighting, um, decks, bridges, uh, gazebos, pergolas, patios. They're all different ideas that you can kind of accessorize your pond with. Um, it's all up to you, right? right? Um, you know, little, all kinds of little, I mean, I go everywhere and I see statues and ornaments and, you know, heron statues out by the pond. Uh, I had a client years ago that went out, he had a heron by his, a, a real heron come to his pond and he, you know, learned that, that they're solitary hunters and if you put another statue of a heron there by the pond, then they, they're, ter they're solitary. So if they see a heron, then they, they won't come, right? So his idea was if I put this heron here, you know, it'll keep the other one away. So he bought this beautiful, like, bronze statue of the heron. I mean, it probably cost a thousand dollars. It is beautiful. It's, you know, it was five foot tall, beautiful statue. And I go up there one time, and the statue, it's, it's laying on the ground next to the pond. So I said, oh man, you know, so I stood it back up and he had it and he had the feet anchored down with some wires and some stakes in the ground. So I like wired it, you know, staked it all back and got it standing up again. And the homeowner came out and he says, hey, Chris, did you, did you stand that back up again? I said, yeah, it was laying on the ground. He says, oh no. He goes, thanks, but I wanted to leave it on the ground because he goes, since he's been laying on the ground, the herons never come back. So I'm thinking that he, he must think that he's dead. And then if he comes, you know, that if the heron, new heron comes to the pond, he'll be dead too. So he's, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me, right? You bought a thousand dollar statue and you just have it lay, laying in the dirt on the side of the pond. <laughs> but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right. So. Anyway, um, <laughs> that about wraps up this video. Um, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button if this helped you out and gave you some ideas. Um, subscribe to my channel you know, if, you, if you'd like to see more videos and, and learn more about ponds and waterfalls and landscaping and all kinds of stuff. And um, please check out my website, pondscapesandmore.com. And uh, we'll hope to see you again soon in the next video. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.